What is up guys, it's Mason once again and today we are looking at another chess game to know by heart and this is a chess game that was played between Stefan Levitsky, a Russian champion and Frank James Marshall who was the US champion for 27 years. I mean, yeah, just shows how good like the guy is. So this game is called the Gold Coins um, Chess Game or the American Beauty. And the reason it's called this is because, um, one, because of the beautiful move that was played, and two, because allegedly after that brilliant move was played, um, gold coins were showered on the board because of how brilliant and how impressive it, impressive it was. So yeah, um, let us check this game, and I will see you guys in two seconds. So we have Stefan Levitsky as white and Frank James Marshall as black, and in honor of him, we are going to look at it from black's perspective so we have d4 um e6 e4 and then d5 so basically this is not how the move should go but we have a transposition into the french defense which is sad because the french defense does not deserve to hold a game like this hot take knight to c knight to c3 and then um c5 now c5 is considered very bad right now not very bad but suboptimal uh the reason being that your opponent just simply plays e takes um e takes d5 e takes d5 and after d takes c5 um white is a pawn up and at the same time he puts pressure on this d5 pawn it's isolated and pushing the pawn really doesn't do much good for you there's so many things that white can do in this position that just makes him better so in modern days if you play this you are literally asking for it but in the olden days it was fine um we have knight to f3 knight to c6 e takes d5 e takes d5 bishop to e2 Knight f6, castles kingside, bishop to e7, bishop to g5, castles kingside for black. So now we are done with the opening and now we are going for the middle game. So far everything is just fine. Uh, position is somewhat symmetrical. Uh, the only difference is the presence of these two bishops. So yeah, uh, the position is somewhat symmetrical. And here white plays um, d takes c5. And this is a very good move. What it does is that you isolate your opponent's pawn. And if you recall our video with um, Edupoku, the interview we did, um, the analysis we did, we spoke about isolated queen pawn positions and how delicate they can be. And that there are different principles that guide playing these types of positions. So sometimes, uh, most often black will have to keep hold of this pawn in as many ways as he can trying to hold and defend the pawn and white can easily attack the pawn or maneuver around the pawn to try and get a very strong and good position so let's just see how this position was handled by these two um, chess players we have bishop to e6 holding the pawn of course there were two attackers and one defender no your attackers versus defenders and here we have knight to d4 knight to d4 is a strange move in my opinion reason being that um it's not bad but the point is if knight comes in here the first thing that comes to my mind is that you are trying to trade off your knight for either of these two pieces and the good thing about white's position was that this pawn was isolated so any capture of either of these two pieces allows him to solidify the pawn in the center which is why this move looks um a little bit inaccurate but it, it's fine. And another thing is that maybe he's just taunting black because if black ever makes this capture and queen comes in here, no matter how black tries to um, attack this pawn, he, he won't ever get it back. And white can just hold on to this pawn and eventually get a very strong attack on the queen side. It's very difficult for black to do something. Basically, it's just very difficult for, for black to do something in this sort of position. So we didn't have that. Instead, we have bishop takes c5, knight takes f6, and then pawn takes f6. Um, so like I said, he's no longer having an isolated pawn. Granted, the good thing about this for white is that white has three pawn islands. Uh, some calculate the islands with the files. I calculate it with the connected pawns. Some also calculate with the connected pawns. I'm just saying it's my own special way, however you want to see fit. Uh, so we have three islands here and white has just two islands. So this pawns Pawn structure speaking, white is better than black, but generally speaking, black is better than white as black has more active pieces and even central control. Um, another thing here is that black has this open file. You can see that his pieces can easily put up more pressure on this F2 square. Meanwhile, white doesn't have any 
think he can speak well, well of unless of course you're talking about this pin so bishop to g4 attacking the backward pawn here uh not really a backward pawn but attacking this weak pawn here queen to d6 getting out of the pin and at the same time defending the pawn and connecting the rooks doing three things with one move excellent we have bishop to h3 avoiding the knight capturing the bishop which would be good for black and now rook a to e8 and the reason why i like this move is that it shows the attacking style of frank marshall there are many ways you could have gone about this game but like edu poku said in that video you can tell that someone has a style based on what they pick when they have many options and he decides to go for this idea which shows his very aggressive mindset okay we have queen to d2 and now bishop to b4 pinning and threatening to play d4 um, we have bishop takes f6, rook takes f6, and now rook a to d1. Um, and we have now queen to c5. Don't rush and say, okay, I'm winning the knight, let me play this move. You should be very careful about such one movers because they can really destroy you. Granted, the knight moves, but then the question is what happens afterwards? I think Gotham Chess calls danger levels. Um, you take my queen, I take your queen, but then what is the resulting position? Your bishop is under attack and your rook is under attack either way something is something is going and it's not going in black's favor that's for sure so yes don't be quick to play a move like this at this point in time so now we have queen to c5 which is very good um we now have queen to e2 um agreeing that he can't hold on to this knight so he gives it to the pawn so he gives up a pawn and just tries to activate his queen um we have bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and now queen takes c3 winning the pawn but white immediately strikes back with rook takes d5 and the reason you can't take this is because you lose the game in three moves queen takes um e8 rook to f8 and now bishop to e6 check and after the king moves away you get checkmated so be very careful about playing quick moves we have knight to d4 a tempo move attacking the queen and developing a piece the queen moves to h5 um can't really speak much you could say it's attacking the rook here which is also true but queen to h5 and now we have rook e to f8 putting up pressure on this square like we spoke about in the past and um levitsky plays in this position rook to e5 and in case you might be confused why is rook to e5 necessary let's just say white is ignorant and play some a move like this after rook takes f2 if rook takes f2 this is simply lights out because you can't do anything and also okay thank you and also um if yeah and, and yeah basically that's it and also um yeah so so that's basically why he did that and the reason was to guard the square I'm, I'm very sorry about that people keep entering the room and it distracts me as if you're hearing doors open and people speaking that is the reason why i've tried recording this video at least 20 times i am not going to restart this video because of this you are going to hear it please i i cannot <laughs> try again trust me that's what happened i have to get my own my own place that that's basically the solution so yeah that's the reason why he plays rook to e5 and yeah um frank marshall in this position has a very easy move to win which is basically the same idea we spoke about rook takes f2 i mean if you don't do anything you're getting checkmated so you have to take and even though now you got the square there's always another square and now you really can't stop me you you just have to sacrifice your piece this is what the pieces do just sacrifice their pieces uh make you waste your time and yeah you, you you just can't do anything about it so yeah uh, at this point frank marshall is completely winning and rook to f2 is a move we would all play i mean it's easy to see uh, doesn't cause you much problems but no frank marshall says you know what i want to be cemented in history forever and goes for this combination that leads to the brilliant most brilliant move some of you may ever see in your entire chess career in fact, you never get this in your whole life, trust me. <laughs> rook to h6. This is not a brilliant move. I said it leads to the move. And the point is you are not attacking the queen. You are actually attacking the bishop. And should your opponent decide that he wants to hold on to the bishop, you simply play knight check. Of course, you can't take any other way. So after pawn takes, queen takes, you win, You go up the exchange because you, you, you trade a, a knight for a, a rook. 
and your opponent is going to face very very damning problems in this position so yeah this position is completely um winning for black as well so white identifying that simply plays queen to g5 allowing black to take the um the bishop but not taking back immediately because you still run into problems if you do do that <laughs> But white plays here rook to c5, attacking the queen. I, I can't really tell what else he was hoping for other than attacking the queen. It just seems like at this point in time, there's nothing he can really do. So yeah, maybe attacking the queen was just a move. Or maybe there was some purpose to it I don't see. Maybe trying to transfer the, the rook here. But here, Frank Marshall plays the most beast mode move you would ever see the most crazy move you would ever see sadly the engines can see it of course they can see it i wish the engines could see it it just show how crazy this move was queen to g3 queen to g3 quadruple x clam if that ever exists you need to give that to this move two x clams three x clams don't really make up for this move this move is crazy and if you don't understand why this move is crazy let's look at all the options that could come up if we have h takes g3 what happens here knight to e2 checkmate if we have um f takes g3 what do we have knight check king can come here because of the rook and after the king moves rook takes f1 checkmate what about if our opponent plays queen takes simply put check king comes in here check if you take this way we simply go mate so if you go the other way um, which is to go in this way we simply have knight check king moves there's no mate in this line but you have three pieces versus two that is easily winning at this level and the final option here um queen to e5 ignoring any kind of capture to try and hold the position and threatening the knight and maybe winning the spawn the move is simply knight to f3 check what is this what is this what is this imagine having this in front of your castle position and your your pawns can't do anything in case you're not seeing it after king to h1 you just have rook takes and this is checkmate my goodness thank god frank marshall went for this we would never have seen this we would never have seen a game like this and as chess theory went on people became so principled so theoretical so solid you won't get this anywhere anymore like sincerely speaking this is exquisite it's one of the best moves i've ever seen i actually wish i was the one who played it but sadly it is not possible so yeah guys that was the move queen to g3 and like I said, gold coins were showered at this move. I would do so, except we have crypto. So I don't know how I'll do that. But yeah, that, that is basically what, what is going on here. Did Gotham say that? Ah, well, I use Gotham's video as a reference in this video. Thank you, Gotham, for helping me and John Bartolomeo and Simon Williams. I'm just saying a lot of things to get to 10 minutes. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out our other videos. We have a lot of educational content on this channel. And we also have um, segments where we interview chess players. Uh, so you can learn a lot on this channel. Um, we mostly focus on, focus on African content. That's why I don't normally see a lot of Magnus Carlsen and all those kinds of things going on. But these games are games you should know. They really help, um, they are fun they are crazy and they, they just show how chess theory has developed so if you did like this video enjoy this video like the video um comment subscribe let me know what you guys want to see it really helps me out and i will see you guys in the next video have a good day peace